飞飞不跳，飞飞飞，飞飞。
中吟，真佛中根本传承，上师圣尊莲生活佛，师母莲香金刚上师。恭请师尊上香顶礼坛城三宝。恭请师尊上法王座。We just welcome our Lenin Street Guru, His Holiness Living Buddha Lian Shum, to enter into the Temple Hall and ascend to the Dharma Throne. Now we are also inviting Simu to please take the Dharma seat. We first do a blessing. Perform the simple version of the Guru practice. Clap twice and in cross your feet. Recite purification mantras. Namo Samanto Mutolam Om Tolu Tolu Tewe Soha. Mian Chao Chin Jo. Recite Evocation Mantra. Hum Soha. Om A Hum Soha. Om A Hum Soha. Zhong Di Zi Isi Hum Soha. We sincerely invoke. Namo Hong Guan Shen Mian. Namo Holy Red Crown Vajra Master is Holiness Living Buddha Lian Shang. Namo Five Dhyani Buddhas. Namo Golden Mother of the Primordial Jade Pond. Namo Tara of the Spells Epidemics. Namo All the Deities Enshrined at the Altar and All Dharma Protectors of Unities. Great Homeless Using Visualization for Student Guru and All Buddhas. Second to All Bodhisattvas. Third to all Dharma protectors and divinity. Fourth half bow. Great Mandala offering from the offering mudra. Visualize the transformations of the offerings.
We set the offering of verse and mantra. Man may rule for continents and sun and moon, transform into priceless offerings for the Buddhas. May these wondrous treasures and merits purge our karma to all of our civilization. For full refuge, visualize. We set the mantra. I'm a protection. Reset the mantra of Tara of Dispels of Epidemics 21 times. Um, Tala, Tutala, Tula, Namom, Hala Hala Hum, Hala So Hab. Um, Tala, Tutala, Tula, Namom, Hala Hala Hum, Hala So Hab. Um, Tala, Tutala, Tula, Namom, Hala Hala Hum, Hala So Hab. Um, Tala, Tutala, Tula, Namom, Hala Hala Hum, Hala So Hab. Um, Tala, Tutala, Tula, Namom, Hala Hala Hum, Hala So Hab. Um, Tala, Tutala, Tula, Namom, Hala Hala Hum, Hala So Hab. Um, Tala, Tutala, Tula, Namom, Hala Hala Hum, Hala So Hab. Um, Tala, Tutala, Tula, Namom, Hala Hala Hum, Hala So Hab. Um, Tala, Tutala, Tula, Namom, Hala Hala Hum, Hala So Hab. Um, Tala, Tutala, Tula, Namom, Hala Hala Hum, Hala So Hab. Um, Tala, Tutala, Tula, Namom, Hala Hala Hum, Hala So Hab. Um, Tala, Tutala, Tula, Namom, Hala Hala Hum, Hala So Hab. Um, Tala, Tutala, Tula, Namom, Hala Hala Hum, Hala So Hab. Um, Tala, Tutala, Tula, Namom, Hala Hala Hum, Hala So Hab. Um, Tala, Tutala, Tula, Namom, Hala Hala Hum, Hala So Hab. Um, Tala, Tutala, Tula, Namom, Hala Hala Hum, Hala So Hab. Um, Tala, Tutala, Tula, Namom, Hala Hala Hum, Hala So Hab. Um, Tala, Tutala, Tula, Namom, Hala Hala Hum, Hala So Hab. Um, Tala, Tutala, Tula, Namom, Hala Hala Hum, Hala So Hab. Um, Tala, Tutala, Tula, Namom, Hala Hala Hum, Hala So Hab. Um, Tala, Tutala, Tula, Namom, Hala Hala Hum, Hala So Hab. Merit dedication. May all uphold the Buddha, ascend to the realm of utmost bliss, repaying for full generosities from above, aiding those in the three realms below. Upon seeing the Buddha, may we transcend life and death like the Buddha, may we liberate all. Inviting our lineage root guru, his holiness, living Buddha, Lian Song, to perform the overall merit dedication.
Homage to Siddhi Garba Bodhisattva. Wholeheartedly, we pay homage to Siddhi Garba Bodhisattva. Wholeheartedly, we pay homage to Siddhi Garba Bodhisattva. We pray to the Bodhisattva to guide the Bardo spirits to be reborn into the pure Buddha lands. We pray to Siddhikarpa Bodhisattva to bless the true Buddha school disciples with good health, all wishes fulfilled, calamities transformed into auspiciousness, and strong spiritual commitment. We pray to Siddhikarpa Bodhisattva to please bless true Buddha school disciples so they are spared from the coronavirus disasters and please bless so that the epidemics will pass soon. Please bless us with ample resources. Please bless us with sufficient wisdom. And please bless us with harmony, love, and respect. Please bless us with diligence in spiritual cultivation. Please bless us so that we can receive the pith teachings and key formulas in our spiritual cultivation. Please bless us with enhanced radiance. Please bless us so that the child light and the mother light can merge together. We pray to Siddhikarpa Bodhisattva, Mahabala, gods in heavens, gods on earth. May we be far from all calamities, may all calamities abandon us, let all disasters turn into dust. May the prayers in our merit dedication be granted in completion. May all of our karma be eradicated. May our karmic sicknesses be eradicated. May the epidemic be eradicated. May our enemies and enmities be eradicated. One. Under syllable mantra once. Om Becha Sato Samaya, Mamu Palaya, Becha Sato Denu Badi Cham, Jazo Me Bawa, Sutu Kai Me Bawa, Supu Kai Me Bawa, Anulato Me Bawa, Sawam, Sidi, Me Blaya Cham, Sawam, Karma, Sucha Mem, Chitamu, Sulijan Guru, Hum, Haha, Haha, Her, Bakawam, Sawam, Tatakata, Beta Mami Mentam, Bets Bawa, 
มาฆาสัมมาอยากสัตโตอะหุมเพ่观想大礼拜。Great homage using resolution for Stuart Guru and all Buddhas. Second, all Buddhas. Third, to all Harukas and Dharma protectors. Fourth, I bow. Reset completion mantra. The representative from the Seattle Lizang Temple would like to make an offering of hatha to the Lenin Sutra Guru as a symbol of the highest honor. Inviting our Lenin Sut Guru, Solana's Living Buddha Lian Shang, to bestow the precious Dharma teachings. First, let's pay homage to the Lenin Sut Gurus. Homage to the Venerable Mang Liao Ming. Homage to Master Sakya Zeng Kong. Homage to His Holiness the Sixteen Kamapa. And homage to Master Dupten Dorji. Homage to the Three Jewels of the Altar. Homage to Siddhigarbha Bodhisattva. Homage to Mahabala. Homage to the retinue of Siddhigarbha Bodhisattva. Sumu, Tanjan Kato, Dutan Siddhi. All Dharma Masters, Dharma educators, Dharma teachers, Dharma lecturers, Dharma assistants, directors of temples and chapters, and all disciples and viewers over the webcast. Good evening. How do you do? I still Sarangi Ola Miko Ola Miko Tekero Mucho Tekero Mucho Sukoi Sukoi Ichiban Kimoji Kimoji Jumi Jumi Yapi Yapi Bling 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 Kombangwa Kombangwa Tajawanan Good evening, everyone. Today, with questions you ask, and I will answer. Here, it mentioned 
Grandmaster, please, in your book, The Pith Teaching to the Path to Liberation, in the article on the Vajra chanting, you mention about holding the breath or qi and the dwelling ah syllable rises to the crown chakra and then descends to the base chakra and then rises again to the heart chakra. Should this visualization be done during complete inhalation or during the holding of the breath? So let me first answer this question. So the ah syllable or character rises to the crown chakra and then descends to the base chakra and then rises again to the heart chakra. The visualization, the visualization of all this is during complete inhalation or holding of the breath. So when you hold the breath, the ah syllable during the holding of the breath, before you disperse the qi, after you hold the breath for a short period of time, before you disperse it, then you move the A syllable up to the crown chakra, down to the base chakra, and then up to the heart chakra. It should be done during the dispersion of the breath or qi. So you breathe in, you hold it, and that ah syllable, and when the dwelling ah syllable, before you disperse it, you use the power of the dispersion to go up and down and up again before you disperse it and then you exhale the breath. That's how you should do it. Not during the complete inhalation and not during the holding of the breath. You do it when you disperse the qi. In practicing the second question, in practicing the nine cycle Buddha breathing, should we be inhaling while visualizing the qi is descending from the trumpet shaped central channel, or should we be exhaling? Can we visualize the central channel inside the spine so that it is stably fixed? So let me tell you, the so-called central channel is formless, intangible. It is to be visualized. It's not on the spine. According to Tantrayana, when you visualize the three channels, your insight is completely empty. Don't think there would be a spine there. Don't think that there is a heart, organ, or lungs, organ, or rib cages, rib cage. I have taught you this before. When you meditate, you should visualize that your whole body is empty. And then you set up your central channel, your right channel, your left channel. So inside is empty, not on the spine. So the spine is used in Taoism. 
to follow the spine. But in Tantrayana, in Tantric Buddhism, it teaches you to empty yourself completely. All that are left are the central channel, the left channel, and the right channel. So, you ask about Nine Cycle Buddha Breathing, and you visualize the white chi, two white chi entering into your body, circulate. When it's dead and there, you go up to the mouth of the trumpet, and then it comes down and then gets out from the two nostrils. What does this mean? You have to do that in one inhalation. So in left and right nostrils, right and left, right and left channels, and then to the central channel, up to the top, and then down again, and then to the left and right channels, and then out the nostrils. That's in one breath. Not that you can continue to inhale and visualize the qi coming down. No, then you should exhale, no. Just with one breath. It's very simple. You use this finger. One breath from the right nostril, one circle, and out the left nostril. And then you use this finger to close that one. That's one breath. And then this in, and then you close this one. And then you out here. You alternate the closing and and the third cycle. Breathe in and then you close both and then it circulate and then you open again and then you breathe out. So you do it with one breath. That's for the nine cycle Buddha breathing. So, do you continue to inhale when the qi is descending from the trumpet chip central channel? No. So, you do it with one breath. So, nine cycle Buddha breathing means nine breaths. Nine times of inhalation and exhalation. So can we visualize the central channel inside the spine? No, that's wrong. Inside it, there are only central channel, left channel and right channel, nothing else. No organs, no blood, no flesh, nothing. It's empty. Uh, also, when visualizing Grandmaster's brow point, throat and ch heart chakras radiating lights to bless me, I often feel that I'm filled with karmic energy so it is impossible for me to visualize the light to be clear and bright or strong. Please advise what should I do so that I can smoothly purge the obstacles to my visualization. When I visualize Golden Mother or Amitabha Buddha or Siddhikarbha Bodhisattva, First, I would think of them, visualize them to appear, and then at the, their brow point, there's a white R. At their throat area, there's a... Oh, at the brow 
point, there is a white om. At the throat chakra, there is a red ah. At the heart chakra, there is a blue hum. All the same. After you clearly visualize the yi dam right in front of you, you visualize three circles, and inside it there are six syllables or mantra seeds, and white, red, and blue. It's easy to visualize white, the color of milk, and then red. It's bright red or red flower the color, and blue, like sky blue. It's very clear, white, red, and blue, and the six syllables, and the radiate light, that right on your brow point, there's a white om, at the throat, a red ah, and at the heart, a blue hum. This is called the empowerment of the three lights. You see the lights radiated by the Yidam. Every time I would see the lights radiated by Amitabha Buddha, the light of Om at the brow chakra, would be shining toward your brow point and you can feel the touch. You have to visualize it clearly. If you are colorblind, colorblind, then of course you cannot visualize clearly. You form a circle that's white and om and red are and blue home to form three circles and then you look at milk and then you visualize that at the forehead there's an om syllable white like milk shining on you and then you carry the red circle and then the blue circle. Should be very clear. So you need to use your power to discard all the running thoughts and visualize clearly. The wandering thoughts should not appear right away. Usually they appear after a visualization for a long time. That's my experience. They usually don't appear right away, the running thoughts. Visualizing Grandmaster's brow point, throat chakra and heart chakra, radiating lights to bless me. I often feel that I'm filled with karmic energy. This is incredible. Yet you can feel that you're filled with karmic energy. I never think of that. Never thought of that. So you visualize the light to be clear and bright and powerful. That is right. The obstacles in my mind. And just try your best. That's all I can say. Because I can think of it very clearly and you cannot. Perhaps sometimes it's clear and sometimes not. It's related to this joke that life is just like poo. There's soft and there's hard, sometimes smooth and sometimes not, sometimes painful and sometimes not. 
and sometimes there's blood and tears, and sometimes you cry out, and sometimes you don't. So you can use all of it. Sometimes when you pull, it's very clear, and sometimes it's not. How much have you poop? You don't know. You have to look back to see it clearly. So human life is really like poop. When I visualize, sometimes it's clear, bright, and powerful, and sometimes it's rather fuzzy. And that is the truth. So human life is just like poo. You need to train so that every time it's bright, clear, and powerful, and strong. Then it will be good. Another question. Dear Master, peace with you. If I perform the nine cycle Buddha breathing quickly, will it affect my qi and channels? And the Chinese medical channels. I have taught you that the nine, to perform nine cycle Buddha breathing, you have to be f soft and fine and gentle and long. You have to visualize it clearly. You have to do it uh, very fine. Where it has reached and then gets out, it has to be slowly, because only when you do it slowly, you can concentrate. If you do it fast, <laughs> it's not that fast. Just do it slowly, step by step. Let's just use my pinkies. Breathe in. Those were six cycles. That was about the speed. Don't do it too fast. If you are already familiar with it, that the nostrils will close off automatically. You don't need the fingers. Then it would be natural. 
There's no need to close the nostrils with the fingers. Because when you use the left nostril, you can control that the breath will, goes, will go in there and close off the other nostril and vice versa. And you perform it for nine cycles. The key point is to concentrate. Why do you want to do it so fast? <laughs> no need to do it so fast. Will it affect my qi and channels? Of course. Because if you do it too fast, sometimes you get hurt. Sometimes you get hurt. The key point is in inhalation, you visualize the qi to reach the areas and slowly, both in inhalation and exhalation. In nine cycle Buddha breathing, there is no holding the breath, just going in and out. And they both slowly, for a long time, the breath you measure with your fingers. It's rather long, not just with the, like the typical breathing that you just reach the throat. As long as about a foot. So about a foot long. So also inside a foot long. In and out. It's all even. Of course, the longer the better. So finely, slowly, and long. So it's not good to do it fast. You cannot concentrate. And if you breathe too quickly, then it will affect your qi and channels. If my family is biased toward Guan Sheng Di Jun or Guan Gong and enshrine him, does it mean that at the time of my family's death that he would come to meet them? Can they follow him and why? Thank you. <laughs> I haven't said anything and you already asked why. We think of Guan Sheng Di Jun Typically, the Pure Land sect believe in the Western Trinity, Amitabha Buddha, Avalokiteshvara Bodhisattva, and Mahasthama Prabhupada Bodhisattva to meet us and guide us to Pure Land. Or when you practice your Yidam Yoga and you have spiritual union with the Yidam, then the Yidam would appear and guide you. And yet you said that your family is biased toward Guan Sheng Di Jun, which is in Buddhism, he is Sangharama, which is the temple protectors in Buddhism. So he's like the temple protector in Buddhism. So we often have a Wei Tuo Skanda on this side, right? And Sangharama is on that side, on the one on the left, one on the right, two sides. So Skanda and Sangharama are the protectors to the Buddha. This is Sangharama. 
that was Sangharama. So if Sangharama appears and you want to follow him, in my personal opinion, it's okay. If you practice Sangharama as your personal deity or yida, and you follow him, it's okay. And this one is Skanda. And you can also treat him as your Yidam or Sangharama too or Skanda. Because you practice Sangharama or Skanda as your Yidam, then at the moment of death, they would appear, he would appear to guide you and you can follow him. It's okay. So if you practice Skanda or Sangharama, it's okay to follow him or them, one of them. However, many Cantonese treat Sangharama as the wealth deity or fortune god. So to worship him as the fortune god. So for Skanda, we call him as Skanda Bodhisattva. Then you can reach the level of Bodhisattva hood. And you can also treat Sangharama as a Bodhisattva. And all the same, you can go to the realm of Bodhisattva. But if you treat them as a fortune god, then you go to the heaven of the fortune god. So the difference is in your mind. In Buddhism, we have a saying, if the causal ground is not correct, is not, then your resultant ground is also slanted. So if your causal ground is slanted, then your resultant ground is also slanted. Therefore, the causal ground is very important. In Tathaya, we say that whichever yi dham you practice, that yi dham will appear. Whenever you're in spiritual union with your yi dham, once you attain spiritual responses with your yi dham, at the moment of death, you can make your soul to leave from your apex and enter into the heart of your yi dham. That's the enter me and I enter. And the Yidam will bring you to the pure land of the Yidam. In Tantrayana, we say, if your causal ground is very proper and correct, then your resultant ground would be proper. Then you would attain the fruition properly. Like Grandmaster practice Amitabha Buddha as Yidam, and Amitabha Buddha will appear. And above him, there is Golden Mother at the center, Amitabha Buddha, and below him, Siddhigarbha Bodhisattva. And three deities appear at once. Your consciousness, your intrinsic nature or spirit or soul would leave your body through the apex and enter into Golden Mother, Amitabha Buddha, and Siddhigarbha Bodhisattva. I made the vow to go to the pure land of Golden Mother, Amitabha Buddha, and Siddhigarbha Bodhisattva. I would transform myself into three bodies, and one follows Golden Mother, one follows Amitabha Buddha, and Siddhigarbha Bodhisattva very clearly. Once you gain spiritual union, they will appear. So this is very important between the Yidam and you. This is a very important matter.
If the Yidam doesn't appear, but your root guru appears, Padma Kumara appears, and you follow him, you enter into the guru's heart, and the guru will bring to the pu you to the pure land of Padma Kumara, the Mahadava Lotus Ponds. Or if your protector appears, Yamantaka appears, the same. You enters into the heart of Yamantaka, you will go to Yamantaka's pure land. All the same. And Yamantaka's pure land is the pure land of Manjushri Bodhisattva and also Amitabha Buddha. In Japanese Tantrayana, they believe that Yamantaka is a manifestation of Amitabha Buddha. In Tibetan Tantrayana, they believe that Yamantaka is an emanation of Manjushri Bodhisattva. Actually, they are from the one line, Amitabha Buddha, Manjushri, and Yamantaka. One line, one system. So about this one, that my family is biased toward Guan Seng Di Jun and enshrined him. Does it mean at the time of their deaths, he comes to meet them, can they follow him? So if your family members regard him as the fortune god, then you go to the heaven of the fortune god, if you regard him as the bodhisattva, then you would go to the heavenly realm of the bodhisattva. That's very good, very meaningful. Someone told the doctor, when I eat the winter gourd, I would poop winter gourd. When I eat watermelon, I would poop the watermelon. When I eat the bitter gourd, I would poop the bitter gourd. What should I eat? And the doctors replied, just eat poo. <laughs> because when you eat poo, you would poop poo. That's cause and effect. If you practice this deity, then that deity will appear. If you bias Guan Seng Di Jun, then Guan Seng Di Jun will appear and guide you. That's good. He's a Bodhisattva. Today is a day to distribute the tests questions and mom asked Xiaoming oh Xiao Hui next door uh, got 99 and Xiaoming reply oh I am one point more oh so you got 100 mom was very happy and he replied no it's 9.9 .9, one more point so 9.9. .9. So today, I will continue to talk about channels, seeds, guiding path. A Tibetan Tantrayana really loves to use Sanskrit characters. In Zen Buddhism, they don't use any Sanskrit characters. There's no Sanskrit characters. Or the Pure Land School. They also don't use any Sanskrit characters. They just chant the Buddha's name. 
in the precept school, Zen Buddhism, Pure Land Buddhism, and the uh, Vinaya Buddhism, they don't use Sanskrit. But Tantric Buddhism, especially Tibetan Buddhism, loves to use Sanskrit characters because the origin of Tantrayana comes from India. So Tibetan characters come originated from the Sanskrit characters. They have modified. So the Tibetan language was modified from the Sanskrit language. And the Sanskrit characters, according to what they said, is that Brahma bestowed the Sanskrit characters to the Indians. So the Sanskrit characters were taught by Brahma. The Creator God created those characters, the Sanskrit characters. So in Tibetan Tantrayana, they love to use Sanskrit characters in their mandalas. For each yidam, the first appearance is of his or her sit syllable and then revolving to become the deity. And then at their forehead, throat and heart, and all their joints are being uh, pasted with Sanskrit characters. So this Lamde is highly revered by the Sakya sect. So they are Tibetan Tantrayana, so they use a lot of Sanskrit characters. For Chinese Han people, they don't write these characters very well, although some do quite well. Like in Japanese Tantrayana, the Kobodaishi or Kukai, he went to Xi'an to learn Sanskrit, and then he brought Sanskrit back to Japan. And look at the Japanese kana, the Japanese characters. Japanese language includes Han characters, which is the Chinese Han characters. Because in Xi'an, he also learned Han and Sanskrit, and combining the Han characters, Han Chinese characters, and the Sanskrit characters, it becomes the Japanese language. So Japanese language is a combination of Chinese Han language with the Sanskrit language was brought back by Kobodaishi. At those times, Tibet was close to India, so Tibetan language used Sanskrit language. So therefore, there's the guiding path of the channel seeds. And for the worldly path, the channel seeds guiding path is explained as the formula for both the qi and the ambrosia, which are clutching on the channels and the seeds. From the start of affinity of the channels and the seeds, the guiding path of the ordinary characters give rise to the unstable appearances. Therefore, the appearance of the seven spiritual experiences that is considered as unreal fantasy. So in the beginning, 
the spiritual experience that appear is not real. At the very beginning, the qi and the ambrosia, so this is talking about qi channel and light drops. At the beginning, the spiritual experience is not real. It is a fantasy. It's created by our own thought. In the beginning of the practice of qi channels and seeds, this kind of phenomena appears. When you practice the qi or the breathing, like nine cycle Buddha breathing, treasure with energy yoga, and what just mentioned, Vajra chanting, that's to practice the qi. And to practice the channels, you use the qi to open the channels. And when you practice the light drops, you practice the white light drops descending and the red in the fire or the red light drops to ascend, to rise. Those are the practices of the qi channels and light drops. And in the beginning, the appeared phenomena is unreal, it's a fantasy, it's not real. So we can say that your qi is not pure, the channels are not completely open, and the light drops are still turbid. So at this time, the spiritual experience that appears, of course, is not real and it is considered a fantasy to be imaginary. During the middle accumulation period, there appears the 14 characters guiding path of the deterring phenomena, and the phenomena is clear and stable. So during the middle accumulation period, the qi channels and light drops would be clearer and more stable. And during the latter accumulation period, there appears the utterly determining lucid appearance of the unimaginable seeds at the, the guiding path to attain the ultimate gentleness where the eyes can see all sorts of appearances far and close. Like the venerable elder Xi Yun, when he was sitting inside his own room, entering into Samadhi, in Tantrayana, in entering Samadhi, your qi is extremely smooth, the channels are open, the qi is full, the channels are open, and the light drops are very clear, ascending and descending and descending and ascending. At this time, the qi would reach the channels of the eyes and it would generate light. When you close your eyes, you use this light to see beyond the walls. So the senior venerable Xu Yun, in his meditation, his two eyes could see outside the walls, even when the walls were closed. He could see a disciple got up in the middle of the night and peed in his garden. It was written in his uh, biography that in his meditation, he saw his own disciple got to his garden and then pick up his rope and peed into his flower pot. And the 
plant, a flower plant, a wilted was burned. So how could the venerable elder Xi Yun could see through the walls that man it had reached the ultimate gentleness where the eyes can see all sorts of appearances far and close. These are the instruction on the worldly path. So his eyes could see things up close and also far away. So this means you have reached the latter accumulation period. You have reached the, the latest. That's unimaginable. It's incredible. So he's seated inside his room, and yet he could see. In the garden. So the venerable elder Xu Yun, now I have his statue in my tent recorder. Because when I suffered from the cellulitis, the venerable elder Xu Yun appeared in the sky. I had read his book in the past. That's the affinity I connected with him. And he appeared in the sky, and he extended his hand from the clouds all the way to my body to bless my feet, my leg. I saw it personally. Grandmaster personally had the vision of the Venerable Elder Xu Yun in the sky on top of the clouds and extended his arm all the way from the clouds to bless my leg. Because I had this affinity, now I enshrine an image of the Venerable Elder Xu Yun and it was offered by Master Chang Ren from the Dokchen Center in Hong Kong. So Grandmaster could see the Venerable Elder Xu Yun, and the Venerable Elder Xu Yun could also bless me. So that showed that both the Venerable Elder Xu Yun and myself have reached that realm. My eyes could see the Venerable Elder Xu Yun on top of the clouds in the sky, and I was lying in bed in my own house. So that means that I could see far and close. You can see far and close. It's really inconceivable. It's really marvelous. If you could reach the latter accumulation period, then you would be able to get this kind of power. And the middle period, it would be very clear and very stable. Your body is very stable. Your qi and channels, your qi makes you very robust and your channels makes you very open and smooth, and the light drops very clear. That's the phenomena of the middle accumulation period. And the initial accumulation period, it's not real. It's just imaginary and topsy-turvy. And for the out-of-worldly path, in the six grounds of the vase empowerment of the out-of-worldly path, by the power of the syllables, it is the guiding path of the pure seeds. In the worldly path and below, it is the power of impure syllables, which rises naturally and doesn't rise due to concentration. In the out-of-worldly path, because it is pure, 
the shape of the channel seeds change invariably. And the mind qi being assimilate, assimilated with it can display all sorts of dignities of the appearances. The four grounds of the secret empowerment, the power of the syllable is mostly the pure guiding path. So in the out-of-worldly path, it's said that it can display all sorts of dignities of the appearances. Grandmaster, sometimes at nights, inadvertently, I didn't intend to see thousand eyes, thousand arms, Avalokiteshvara Bodhisattva. I just visualized Amitabha Buddha to appear. I visualized myself to become my Yidam, Amitabha Buddha, and the two of us in union. I visualized Avalokiteshvara sprinkle the pure nectar upon me. I visualize Mahastama Prabhupada Bodhisattva to radiate red light from his butt, lotus butt upon me. That's all I visualize, but all of a sudden, my right eye saw the thousand eyes, thousand arms, Avalokiteshvara Bodhisattva coming. It's not the image of that, but there are many arms appearing, not regular like the usual image. Many arms moving, waving, and the face of Avalokiteshvara. And so I saw the appearance of the thousand eyes, thousand arms of Lokiteswara Bodhisattva. And then I ask, why suddenly the thousand eyes, thousand arms of Lokiteswara Bodhisattva appear to show me? And Avalokiteswara Bodhisattva replied, because tomorrow during your webcast, your Tongshu. I would become your main deity to appear in front of you. Therefore, I am able to see. It's not visualization. I didn't visualize it. I did not visualize it. He just appeared right next to me. And the arms are moving, are changing, forming many mudras and carrying all kinds of dharma implements, lots of hands and lots of eyes, all transforming. I saw it very clearly and I felt very happy, very joyous. So that's also considered to be the guiding path because in the out-of-worldly path, it can display all sorts of dignified appearances. Like the Avalokiteshvara Bodhisattva, that's because you're pure because of the pure, the shape of the channel seeds change invariable, and the mind qi being assimilated with it. And the qi is pure, the channels also pure, and the light drops too are pure. And at that time, the light radiance that appears would be real and truthful. It's very clear. And this is also about clarity. In the past, once upon a time, there was a strawberry, 
and because he always used the face uh, mask, you know, like a mud mask, then the strawberry became a tomato. So the strawberry represents the mundane path or the worldly path, and the tomato represents the out-of-worldly path. So from the coarse one to become the fine one, our physical body is coarse. In the future, you can make yourself to become very fine, that the fine physical body, like a Padma Kumara, will appear. Then you move toward purity. So the surface of the strawberry is impure and tomato is pure. And another strawberry uh, got uh, uh, like it doesn't like to eat. What's that called? It doesn't like to eat. So then it became the goji berry, goji berry, <laughs> which is drying up. Anorexia. So that's cause and effect. So when the strawberry dried up, then it became goji berried. Goji berry, which is dry, dried up. That's cause and effect. So when we practice the purification of the body, speech, and mind, gradually we purify our qi channel light drops and the mind qi. Once you're purified, you become a mirror. And when you're a mirror, you can reflect on the appearance of the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas, and it would be very clear. Because if your mirror is not clear, then the image would be fuzzy. Therefore, you purify your body, speech, and mind first, then your qi channel and seeds would also become pure. Then you would become a clear mirror. Then the image of the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas would be very clear. This person felt that uh, man, so man is more important than woman. Then the heavy ones should be picked up by the man. So how can we have equality between man and woman? Man has more strength, right? And man looks more coarse and stocky, and woman looks more gentle and fine. They are different. So there is a difference between man and woman. Man and woman cannot be equal. Why uh, the heavy ones always done by man and the light ones are done by woman? There's some reason to it. Is there anyone? Do you sell any life insurance that would give uh, a money when you become fat? Because life insurance in Chinese is play of word in Chinese. Life insurance instead of like being skinny insurance. So if you're not skinny, if you're too fat, then you would get the proceeds. There is no such insurance. Dad asked mom, why are you always so kind to the kids? 
You're always uh, very kind and gentle and caring toward the children, but but to me, you're always very strict and fierce. Before mom replies, the kids replied, because we are all born from mom, but not you. Sometimes it sounds rational, but mom always closer to the kids. But actually, dads love their kids too. About the epidemic, the days of taking temperatures is about to pass. If there's no more em epidemics, we don't have to measure our temperature, our body temperature. But then we should measure our weight because we just stay home and sleep and eat. So when you look at Grandmaster, do I gain weight or lose weight or the same? The same. Oh, that's good. That's the best. That means I don't love to eat. I don't eat too much. And trav on traveling, we travel to the temple, and when I want to get a ticket, I ask, is there a special ticket, special discount for students? The student about to visit a temple and had to keep buy a ticket in China to visit a temple, you have to buy a ticket. And as I remember, not in Taiwan. We don't sell tickets at Taiwan temples. But in China, yes. And the student asks, is there a special discount for students? And the person selling tickets replied, everyone is equal in front of the Buddha, so there's no discount for students. Wait until the epidemic pass, then the man will understand why some people will, some women will feel depressed after childbirth. It's related. Not in Taiwan. About epidemics. For us, from March, we have the stay-at-home order up till now. It has not been lifted yet. And there are many people who cannot stand it anymore. Everybody has got a weird temper. Some people have suffered from depression. So we hope that the epidemic will pass very soon. 
that we are being protected by the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas because we already feel in our hearts that we are always being locked, <laughs> locked in. You cannot gather a lot of us. See, it's only Grandmaster, only webcast, and also for the for the Homa. So if we don't open the lockdown, or they leave the stay home order, then our upcoming grand ceremony will be performed at the Dragon Pavilion, Dragon King Pavilion. <laughs> and we will have the webcast because so there should be flight, flights between between countries, right? So the disciples can come. Otherwise, they cannot come even if they want to. They have to be in quarantine for 14 days. So it's the same between U.S. and Canada. The border is being closed. So the Canadians cannot come to America and the Americans cannot go to Canada and moreover to other countries. So we really hope the epidemics will go away soon. So we pray to Buddhas and Bodhisattvas to please shower compassion upon all sentient beings so that the epidemic will go away soon. Please bless us. Otherwise, that's the webcast for today on Mani Pemi Home. 恭请师尊加持大悲咒水以及加持网络收看的大众和工作人员。And now we would like to invite His Holiness to bless everybody and also the Great Compassion Holy Water. This ends the English interpretation today. Thank you very much.
，顶礼坛城，一拜师佛，十方佛，嗡，啊，吽。二拜诸菩萨，嗡啊，吽。三拜护法金刚，嗡啊，吽。是平等一起手。今天的网络直播到此结束，非常感谢大家的收看。